Welcome once again, Code to Fix with your Pegasus. We're going to work with the Pegasus and show you how to diagnose a fault code top to bottom, starting with the fault code, then repair information, all the way straight through to the direct test and to the verification of the repair. This is a Buick with an actual fault code that we brought in today. It has a mass airflow sensor fault code, but at the same time, before we're over with, I'm also going to show you something that may be drivability related, not necessarily a fault code as well. So let's begin. First, I must enter the vehicle. Um, this is a 2000 Buick, so I'm going to go ahead and select domestic. At that point in time, up will come a picture of the actual year ranges. The years will go from 2009, if you notice, it'll go all the way right down to 1979. Every decade's a different color. We can enter the year by the name of the year or the tenth digit of the VIN. So at this point, I'm going to select 2000, and then it's going to come up and ask us for what make we're working with. We use common OEM icons. In this case, we're going to touch on Buick. Then we're going to touch on the actual um, fourth VIN of the car, which is LeSabre. And it does ask for the LeSabre, so we don't have to actually go look at the fourth VIN. We know it is one. I'll tap on Custom. And then we're going to go ahead and look at all the modules. This has nine modules with six possible variations for ABS alone. So what we're going to do is go ahead and select PCM because we do have a check engine light. One of the interesting parts is that there are nine modules and we're going to show you how that you can look at all those modules to look for any possible conditions of a fault code or other possible issues that are there as well. But right now, let's go look at the check engine light and at the same time, I'll show you what we're going to do in a moment. So at this point, we'll select PCM. This car does not have an air pump. So I'll select without air pump. And now I get a picture of our cable. You'll notice it's an actual cable picture, and it gives you the part number plus the description. If an OBD1 cable is required, it would then show a picture of that, and the OBD1 cable would be either blue for domestic or green for Asian or red for uh, European, and it would have the part number and the name of that cable. So I'm going to click on the cable, and at that point, we'll get started. So let's let it come up. Now it's building our diagnostic test menu. There's a couple tests that we can do. Remember, I told you this vehicle had nine actual modules on board. So one of the things that I'm going to do right now is I'm going to talk about two of the tests that we can perform, all systems DTCs, and then later on automated systems test. All system DTCs actually will physically go out to every single module on that car and pull up every single fault code, even though I only selected PCM for engine transmission. That's very interesting because what that does is that'll provide me the productivity I need to improve my efficiency and make the shop more profitable. Giving us the ability to look at fault codes for every module at the same time giving a health check on that car. Let's go ahead and talk about the one that we are actually going to perform. That's called automated systems tests. Much like that of all systems DTCs, automated systems tests will perform the same test on every module on that vehicle. What it's going to do is look at each one of those nine modules. It'll select the modules for us, and then it's going to give us all the fault codes. It'll give us mode six and mode one. So let's begin the automated systems test, and I'll describe a little bit more what it's doing. Right now, if you look at the top, you'll see three icons at the top. The middle one represents the icon that our vehicle communications device, VCI, J2534-1 and-2 OEM, um, uh, vehicle communications interface is actually wireless to the car. That indicates that we are wireless. You can also notice these to the left there's our actual wireless bar. That wireless bar tells us what our signal strength is. And to the far right you'll notice that we have an icon that actually tells us we're going to be talking to the internet. We'll look at that for repair information in a little while. The automated systems test is right now going ahead and talking to every module on one of those car on this car. It's looking at which of those six ABS modules are there. It's determining that. And we're doing that because the VCI itself is going to configure what our switching mechanism should be. It's muxing and talking to each one of those modules. It's switching for us. We do not have to use personality keys or smart inserts. As a result, we can go ahead and check every one of those nine modules without having to exit back out to the main menu and then select ABS or then to exit back out and select airbag, exit back out, and select transmission and body, etc. Which is what makes us much more productive, allowing you to have, be much more efficient and be more profitable. In a few moments, the test will be done, but right now it's collecting the fault codes for ABS. And it's going to continue on with the test and collect more fault codes for airbag. And then it's going to collect fault codes for, for um, instrument panel, etc. It takes a few minutes according to the vehicle. It could take anywhere from a minute and a half to as much as approximately six minutes, depending on how many modules this vehicle has. This one has nine, but if you're working with a Cadillac that may have 39 modules, it could take up to six or seven minutes. 
Obviously with nine modules, we're probably looking at approximately three minutes worth of test time. In a moment it will be done, and then we'll be able to go pick a fault code, the actual fault code for this vehicle, and then slowly resolve it. So right now, I'm getting my fault code. Step one in the diagnosis. As a result of that, I will be able to then go see if there's any other fault codes for any other modules. That's a health check for the customer, providing the ability for us to do an upsell to possibly sell additional work later on, but also at the same time giving him preventative maintenance, reassurance that his car will perform flawlessly in the future. So let's let us finish up, and it should be done shortly. At this point, it's looking at uh, uh, rear integration module. In a moment, it'll switch over and get global OBD2. And then it's going to go ahead and collect mode 6. Then it's going to go ahead and collect mode 1, readiness monitors. And then it'll go ahead and collect mode 5, O2 sensor tests. We'll have all that stuff to review easily in one module, one actual page. We'll be able to save it or print it as we need to. At this point, it's pulling up our freeze frame data for Global OBD2. We're nearly in completion. We're at 64%. And we haven't even been on the test now for approximately one minute. And we should be done in approximately another minute, so it's going fairly quick. It's reading the O2 sensor test for, for Global OBD2. And in a moment, we will be finished. The interesting part is we have checked all nine modules. I didn't have to exit out. I didn't have to go and select another module, change my personality key. I did this all by just physically going to the car, hooking up, going wireless to the scan tool, and then recording all our data by selecting automated systems test. It's a test that we provide because we are using a J2534-1 and-2 OE type vehicle communications interface. Now we are pulling up um, param uh, component parameters, mode 6 for global OBD2. And in a moment, we will be done. Again, we've only been approximately two minutes now, so that's not bad. If you were to think about it, if I had to go back out and go to each one of those nine modules, backing out, selecting the module, then changing my personality key, we would probably be about 13 to 23 minutes, and more likely 23 minutes. We're now done. There's our summary page. It says it's found 19 fault codes. Some of those will be fault codes that are in here in history, or fault codes that are current, or fault codes that are MIL. But let's go ahead and look at what's available for us. Right now, you'll see we have DTC. DTC is available. We also can look at data stream snapshots. We can look at mode one. We can look at mode five. We can look at freeze frame data. And we can look at mode six. But let's go back and physically look at the DTCs. I'm going to tap on the left tab over to the left, DTCs, and I'm going to look at the fault codes that are there. Right now, you'll see I've got approximately four fault codes, but all those fault codes are the same. One has failed since cleared. One is an MIL code, turning the check engine light on. And one's a history code and then current codes. If I scroll down using my speed scroll, you'll notice that I've also got a low tire pressure detected fault code and a few others. So I'm going to go back up. We're going to go look at our actual current code. I'll tap on P0102B. Once I do that, we'll populate our left side a little differently. I'm going to take my down arrow and scroll down until I find the repair information that's available to us. If you notice in the upper left looking at our icons, you'll see that I have the icon for the internet. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to go back to our tool and I'm going to physically go ahead and get some repair information. We have the ability to go to direct hit internet to actually get all the repair information available for this vehicle. I'll tap on direct hit. In a moment it's going to come up and ask us some information and what year range do we want to select this vehicle. I can select this exact vehicle which will narrow down my actual available information for this one particular fault code, P0102. But I kind of want to widen it and see what other information might be available for this car that might give me a broader view of what could be wrong. This will help you narrow down the actual problem. I'll be able to find the actual issue and the actual repairs that have been done, known fixes, actual real world repairs that are out there right now. So I'm going to go with models with the same engine package plus or minus two years. In a moment, up will come direct from our internet all the available repair information. For example, if we look, we've got 93 out of 4,480 hotline archives available to us. I got seven of 356 posted fixes. And I've got one of 156 OBD2 code data. 